In this video I'm going to show you 14 WooCommerce backend hacks you can use on every site. For example, I'm going to show you how to create a custom order status in progress for example. How to filter your orders by coupons used for example, filter only by coupons test 20. There it is. I'm going to show you how to add a column which shows which coupon is used. Take a look at this one here. I'm going to show you how to filter by payment methods and so on. So all together 14 great backend hacks. Now if you're not subscribed to this channel then you don't know that I don't like the lengthy introductions therefore let's jump in and let's start with first hack here. Now though first things first you have two options. First is you would need to add all those hacks into the child teams functions PHP file. Another one is go to the plugins add new and search for code snippets. This one here. This is a method I prefer because it allows me to use all the hacks even after switching teams. So activate, go to snippets and add new. One more thing that may interest you is that this is a next episode of the series of the videos I have made. For example, I have made the video about how to customize checkout page with 26 hacks. There is a video about card page hacks, 21 of those, category page, 17 hacks, single product page hacks, and 12 usual WooCommerce tricks and hacks. I'm going to put the link to those videos in the description, though, if you're interested, then take a look. Now let's start by adding first hack. And that means that we're going to create the first hack, and the first hack is going to be named redirect to orders page after login. Why would you need that? Well, Maybe the main task you do on your site is log in, go to orders and manage orders. But if you log in, the first page you'll be taken to is the dashboard page. Then you have to go to the orders page. That means two extra clicks. But to resolve it, I'm going to create a snippet which will direct me to the orders page after login. I'm going to choose only run in administration area, save changes and activate. One more thing to point out though. Maybe it's not the orders page you want to redirect yourself. Maybe it's a products page. Therefore, hover on the products link, copy the link and replace this part here. Delete everything which is before edit. And same with this address here. So you need to change both of the addresses. But at the moment, I'm going to leave it to the orders and save changes. Now you don't have to write this down because take a look at the description of this video. There is a link to the blog post which contains all the snippets I'm going to show you today. So let's test it out. I'm going to log out and now log back in. And as you see, I'm redirected to the orders page. And that leads us to the second hack, which means we're going to disable WooCommerce bloat. What I mean by that is... As you see, WooCommerce adds analytics and marketing menus, but since I have a small shop, maybe I don't use it. Now let's take a look. I'm going to refresh the page and let's measure it. It took us approximately two seconds to load and it has 143 requests. So let's remember them because we're going to come back later to it. So I'm going to close it down, go to snippets, add new, give it the title, Woo disable WooCommerce bloat paste this snippet here, only run in administration area, save changes and activate. Now let's go back to the orders again and let's measure it. As you see, now we have 109 requests and the loading time is 1.1 seconds. Basically with a one piece of code, we cut half of the loading time and quarter of the requests. So if you have a small shop and you don't need the marketing and analytics, Menus and those reports, which are here by default, are enough for you, then you can disable the WooCommerce bloat. Next, let's move to the products. Sometimes you need to know the product IDs. For example, you need to use short code which uses them or code snippets which uses them. And the way to figure out what is the product ID is to hover on it and see the down bottom or take a look at the URL here. With this hack, we're going to create another column which shows us uh, product ID. Therefore, let's go to the snippets, add new, give it the title, paste the snippet, nothing to configure here, only run in administration area, save changes and activate, go to the products, and there you go, ID number is here. 
If you don't know, then under the screen options, you can activate or deactivate the columns as shown here. So product ID is nicely visible. Since we are already on the product page, let's create a filter here. I have a couple of featured products up here. And since I have only two, 23 products, it's not hard to find them. But let's imagine that your shop has hundreds and hundreds of products. But unfortunately, there is no way to filter out products which are featured. And therefore, I'm going to create a filter that allows us to do that. So once again, go to the snippets, add new, give it the title featured and out of stock filter, paste the code. If you want to change the name, then change this part here, show all. Only run in administration area, save changes and activate. Let's go to the products. Show all product visibility, featured products, filter. There you go. There is also a out of stock one. It duplicates this one here. So featured product filter with a couple of clicks. With the next tag, I'm going to add a tax column here. It will show you a tax status and another column will show us tax class. Recently, one of my customers needed it because she had a shop with lots of tax classes and she wanted to figure out which product has which class. It made her easier to change those. Therefore, let's go to the snippets. Once again, add new, give it the title, paste the code. Couple of things to point out. If you want to change the column names, then take a look at these strings here. Tax class, taxes taxable, shipping only, or none. Only run in administration area, save changes and activate. Let's go to the products. And as you see, and we have a new two new columns here, tax class taxable, tax class standard. Let's change it. Shipping only, zero rate, update, all products. And as you see, taxes shipping only, tax class zero rate. And once again, with the 20 seconds of copying and pasting, you modified your shop. It seems that I have finished the product list hacking. Therefore, I'm going to move to the orders. And this time I'm going to add the custom order status. What I mean by that is that if you go to the WooCommerce orders, by default, it has processing on hold completed and canceled statuses. With a hack number six, I'm going to add a custom order status called in progress. But you can rename it as you like, for example, awaiting payment or delayed or whatever. So let's go to the snippets, add new, give it the title, paste the code. Here goes uh, state's name, same goes here and here. Also here, here and here. Now, this time you have to choose run snippet everywhere. Why? I'm going to show you in a minute. So save changes and activate. Let's go to the orders. As you see, I already have those added here, but let's change the status for this order here. Change status works well. Shows up in preview. Appears here. Now let's go to the my account page. I'm going to take a look at the orders here. As you see, it's appears here also. If I choose only run in administration area and save changes, if I refresh it, as you see, it doesn't show up here because the snippet is not working on the front end. Therefore, you have to choose run snippet everywhere here. So pay attention to that. And that concludes hack number six. Let's move to the hack number seven. In order to show you what I mean, I'm going to go back to the orders. If I open up the coupons, as you see, I have three coupons here, test 20 and two other ones, but I can't filter out the products which used some kind of coupon codes. Therefore, with the help of this snippet, I'm going to create a new filter element here. I'm going to filter out products which have coupons. That is snippets add new. Give it the title, paste the code. Nothing to configure here, only run in administration area, save changes and activate, back to orders. And there it is, filter by coupon used, test 20, and there it is. Now let's move to the hack number eight. That means I'm going to add a column which shows me the coupons used for the orders. So back to the snippets, add new, give it the title, paste the code. 
if we want to change the string, then change this one here and this one here. Only run in administration area, save changes and activate back to the orders. And as you see, there is a new column coupons, no coupons used, but there is a one order that has a coupon test 20 shows up here. But if I open up the order itself, then there is no coupon shown here. And it is also not shown on the preview page, which means we need to create another hack. We're going to add new one, give it the title, paste the code. And once again, take a look at the strings, used coupon, coupon used and so on. Just change, change those. Only run in administration area, save changes and activate. Now back to the orders. If I take a look at the preview, then there is a coupon, no coupon used. But if I open up this one here, test 20. And if I open it up here, it shows up also here. Now I'm going to go back to the orders because there is another hack I need to create. This time I'm going to create another filter. And I want to filter all the orders by payment method used. As you see, there is none by default, but I'm going to go to the snippets, add new, give it the title, paste the code, change the strings if needed, all payment methods, for example, for me, only run it in administration area, save changes and activate. Back to the orders. And there it is, all payment methods. I'm going to filter direct bank transfer. Cash and delivery, no orders with this payment method. Handy feature if you want to filter out WooCommerce orders by payment methods. Another filter here to create, and this time I'm going to create a filter which allows me to filter orders by user role. So back to the snippets and add new. Once again, give it the title and paste the code. Only run in administration area, save changes and activate. Back to the orders. And select the user role, guest, customer, administrator, and so on. Simple yet effective, isn't it? And that means it's time to move to the next hack. And if I'm not wrong, it's hack number 12. I have a processing status here. And processing means that customer has paid for it. And he or she is waiting for me to complete the order by sending it to him or her. But on one of my sites, I have a LMS plugin called Tutor LMS, and it has a problem which I need to describe. So I created a course over there, and the course access is granted only for users whose order has a status completed. That means if the user pays for the course, he or she will not get the access to the course automatically because the order status is processing. It needs to be completed. Therefore, I need to create a hack which will automatically set the processing status to complete it. If the user pays, there is no processing status, it will be completed and therefore the user gets access to the course. So it's a simple hack. Let's go to the snippet, add new, give it the title, paste the code, run snippet everywhere, save changes and activate. And now further on, if the user goes to the site, pays for the product, there is no processing status for him or her. It will be completed automatically. And that concludes the orders part. Next hack is not directly related to the WooCommerce. You can use it also without WooCommerce installed. I'm going to go to the users. And as you see, I have currently two users here. Username, name, email, role, posts, but there is no option for me to see when the user is registered and I am unable to sort the user's by registration date. Therefore, I'm going to create another sortable column here. This time I'm going to go to the snippets once again, give it the title, paste the code, only run in the administration area. Here goes the column name if you want to change it. So save changes and activate back to users. And there it is, registered, and I can sort them. It's a nice and easy way to show when the users have been registered on your site. And that means we have only one hack to go. This time, I'm going to go to the media page. This hack is also not directly WooCommerce related, but it's useful with or without WooCommerce. As you see, bunch of images, but no way for me to see how big are those images. 
Sometimes users tend to upload images that are too big, therefore I'm gonna create an easy way to see how big are the images. So back to the snippets, add new, give it a title, paste the code, only run in administration area, save changes and activate, back to the media library. And as you see, I have a column file size here. Now I can see how big are the files uploaded. And if the file is too big, I can make it smaller and re-upload. So these were the 14 WooCommerce backend ha hacks. One more thing to test though, let's go to the orders and see how all those 14 hacks relate to the loading time. As you remember, before disabling WooCommerce plot and before adding any other hacks except the redirection, we had 143 requests, now we have 108. The initial loading time was approximately 2 seconds, now it's 1.2. So all those hacks I added here, the site is faster than it was before and I have a bunch of more options here. Now if you find this video helpful then don't forget to press thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed then please subscribe. And before you go take a look at the next video you see on the screen right now because it's also full of useful content. Let me know in the comments which was the hack you liked the most. Meanwhile take care.